Well, many anglers in the bass fishing world feel that these baits right here are the absolute best for locating fish. And we're gonna see in this video why they are so enticing. Glide baits, big swim baits, they are super popular, but they are also intimidating for a lot of anglers. The price, the equipment selection, the subtle differences between the types of baits, and then the presentation, they oftentimes create more questions for us. Well, today I'm gonna sync up the video between the rod and the lure under the water so we actually can see what happens and what are the presentation techniques to get that type of retrieve that we're looking for. Now it is super important to note that glide baits, and I'm gonna be talking about the single jointed glide baits here, there's a big difference between some of them on the marketplace. And one of the things that you wanna look at is the angle of the tail here. Does it just fall over to the side a slight bit like this one, or does it drop over more to the side? If you have one that just turns slightly like this, this is gonna be a slower, wider gliding type of a bait. Or do you have a glide bait where the tail falls a little bit farther to the side? That one, you're going to be able to work a little bit quicker and shorter side to side action. And it's important to understand which type that you have, because if you try try to retrieve one that is designed for a slower, wider glide, you're gonna be frustrated if you try to work it too quickly and don't understand what that bait was designed for. Now the ones that I'm gonna be using today are the River 2CS waivers. This is the 168S. And the reason I wanted to start off with this is because in the glide bait and the big swim bait world, things can get crazy expensive really quickly. This one here, you can still get for that under, under that $20 mark. And I know a lot of you are thinking, uh-uh, you're crazy, I'm not throwing that bait. And I get nervous putting it out there too, just waiting for that first big Northern to come up and steal it from me. We will get into some of the more expensive baits later on throughout the season. Now, as far as the equipment, this is my big glide bait setup. So this is a seven foot six medium heavy power rated rod with a moderately fast action. So that's important, the action, it doesn't get to the backbone of the rod until a little bit farther down the tip. And then this is the Lose Super Duty 300 reel. So a bigger, heavier reel. This particular setup is just for my bigger baits like this and I'm throwing it on 17 pound test fluorocarbon. Now I did my retrieves here both with a number three snap, a great big snap on here, and then also without. There are a lot of glide bait anglers that like the snap on here because it helps them get that wider rotation side to side. I did uh, footage with both of these so you can see both with and without. I will say with the snap, I felt it was a little bit easier to get that side to side action, that widest glide. But as you can see without the snap, it did really well also. Now the real key for this gliding bait action has to do with the amount of slack that you throw into the line before you move it with that rod tip. We've got to have enough slack in there so it gets that full rotation, that full side to side action. As you can see right here, it just slides or glides through the water column very nicely. And whether you're using the rod kind of off to the side, like a side sweeping action, or just straight down, it doesn't matter. This idea of throwing enough slack into the line before you actually pull it is very important. A lot like walking the dog, but at a slower pace. Now you can see in this footage right here, if I have the line too tight or not enough slack in it when I go to pull it, the lure just acts all crazy. It doesn't have that full side to side glide. Sometimes it dips up, it dips down. It actually starts to fall over off center. Everything just gets all kind of crazy. So we really wanna focus on that slack. Now, once you get this down by practicing a little bit slower, you can start to retrieve the lure quicker. So you can really figure out what the bass want on a particular day. It takes a little practice, but once you get the slow retrieve down, it's very easy to speed it up slightly. And many of your very best glide bait anglers, they'll be using that very slow, wide retrieve, and then they'll go ahead and just give it a couple quick bursts, boom, boom, pop, pop, just really quickly. And what that does is that mimics that fleeing bait fish type of action. And if you've got some followers, that oftentimes can 
key them in, key their instincts in that they don't want that bait fish to get away and they will attack it. So make sure that you throw those couple slight bursts in there as well. These slow sweeping side to side glide baits are so good for covering water. You can work them across points, both sides of the point, across the middle, go ahead and parallel down shorelines, work the edges of weed beds. These lures excel at that when you're covering water, locating fish, and in many situations, they just can't leave it alone. And if you want to watch a video about some different retrieves for the jig minnow, so going the other end, very, very small, which are super popular, extremely easy to learn, go ahead and check this video out right here. And make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For The Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.